Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and this video is the second in a series featuring the Laser Pecker 4. This video is going to be all about connecting software up to the LP4 and running some mini sample projects to get a close up look at just how this machine runs. Let's get started by jumping into the computer and checking out the Laser Pecker Design Space. This is the software that's compatible with the LP4, and best of all, this software is free. I'm on the main landing page for the LP4. When I move to the top of the screen under software, I'm going to see that there's two main branches of software options, one being computer software, which is what I'm going to be using today. The other option is going to be an app for mobile device. When I click on the LDS software for a computer, this brings up another page and it gives me a number of different options depending on what kind of computer I have. In today's case, I'm using a Windows based computer, so this is the option I would select, but there's also options for Mac computers. Installation of the software again is free. It's also very quick and very easy. And if there's any drivers or software components needed to connect the computer up to the machine, that is included with the software download and the LDS software will prompt me if I need to install those. After the software is installed, this will be the landing page for LDS software. Off to the side here, we see that I've got a number of tiles that are already available for me, and that's because I worked ahead a little bit. And when I start saving projects, this is where those projects appear. For today's video, I am going to create a new file. This is going to be the main workspace of the LDS software. Let's go on a quick tour. On the left hand side, I'm going to have all of the different drawing tools and assets. Down here at the bottom, there's also some clip art. When I click on that, it opens up a library of built-in clip art available for me, again, for free. There's a lot of great little uh, clip art options here, and this is what I'm going to be using in today's sample projects. And I encourage you, if you're new to this machine, to just use some of the clip art. It's a great, fast and easy way to get up and running and running the LP4. Moving towards the top of the screen, there's a number of different alignment tools used when I create a project. There is also an offset that'll draw an outline around an object. I also have a fill option. I'm going to loop back to this in a little bit. Moving over to the far right hand side is going to be all my layers and engraving layers that I'd use along with the built in library of a ton of different materials with presets used with the LP4. That doesn't show up right now because I am not connected to the device. Literally all I have to do to connect up to my machine is click this one button and I get the next window that pops open and it wants to connect on this port. I'll click on that and there we go. Clicking two buttons and my computer is already connected up to the LP4. That is pretty quick and pretty darn easy. The LDS software offers a very clean layout for creating projects. And speaking of creating projects, I think I'm all set to start with my first sample project. I'll grab a graphic from the clip art. I like the logo for the laser pecker, so I'll click on that. And that imported the image already. It's actually behind this clip art window. I don't need this anymore. The material that I'm going to be using is one of these black aluminum cards that comes with the machine. And when we work with these types of lasers, we always want to have that graphic centered directly underneath the machine. So I'm going to use an alignment tool and align to center. That looks good. 
I'm going to see that I've got a lot more things that popped up on the right hand side of the screen for my layer control and my settings. The first thing that I'd like to do is switch the laser type over to 1064. This is going to be the infrared laser module built into the LP4 and that is going to be perfect for this black aluminum card. The next thing that I'm going to do is select the material. And for this, I am going to do aluminum, and that's right here. I can scroll down and I'll see basically almost a duplicate of all these different preset settings. The difference being the little blue icon next to the verbiage, that is going to represent settings for the blue laser diode that's also in the LP4. Once again, I'm going to use that 1064 IR module, so I'm going to use these settings up here, and it automatically pops in the settings that are going to be compatible with this aluminum card. This built-in library gets me up and running crazy fast. Next, we'll see I've got options for resolution. When I pull this menu down, I have options for 1K, 2K, 4K, and 8K with 8K offering the highest amount of resolution. Just know that the higher the resolution, the longer the engraving time will take. For today's video, to keep things short, I'm going to be selecting 1K resolution. I'm ready to now start engraving that card. There's going to be two quick things that I need to do. The first one, and I think it's the most important, Seems pretty rudimentary, but I do need to remove the lens cover off of the field lens of the LP4. This sounds so basic, but trust me, there'll come a day when you go to laser and you're not engraving anything, and that's because this cover is on. Mine, I've attached a red string on it to remind me to remove that cover. If I don't remove this cover and I start engraving, if I leave it go long enough, I'm actually going to not only melt the hole through this cover, but all of that smoke that comes off of this is going to attach up to that field lens. And with that residue on that lens, I'm going to start laser etching my field lens and that's going to wreck the lens and it will need to be replaced. A simple red ribbon is a great way to avoid all of that. The next thing I need to do is set the focus of the laser machine. When using the included orange shroud, this magnetically snaps up into place and focus is set perfectly once the shroud touches the top of the work material. The other option for setting the focus is measuring the 150 millimeters from the outside lip of the field lens down to the top of the work material. I found at times getting that exact 150 millimeter distance measured can be a little bit difficult. So I made this little T-handle device that is exactly 150 millimeters long. I used wood because it is not going to scratch anything as I'm using this near the field lens. This is a great and quick, easy way to find the perfect focus. There's also another option when I hit the preview button within the software, there is going to be two red laser beams that come down and when the laser is out of focus, I'm going to see that I've got two dots and as I move the focusing boom up and down, those two dots are going to converge to one dot. When I've got that one dot, the laser is also in focus. The lens cover has been removed and the focus has been set on the laser machine. I'm now ready to start engraving my first project. Even with the machine on the lowest resolution for engraving, I have amazing detail and this large engraving didn't take very long at all. The second project I'm going to make using the LDS software is going to switch materials and switch the laser module in the machine. The material that I'm going to be using is this wooden plywood and I'll be using the blue laser diode. Let's check out the LDS software for the next design. 
I'm going to pick out some clip art once again. I'm going to click on that. And I'd like to do a mandala, so I'm going to click under graph under that menu setting. That is where they have all of these tucked away. And I like the look of this one. And I'll click on that. And once again, it loads it in behind this clip art window. And this looks good. And now to switch the laser type, all I'm going to do is click on 450. That is going to be the blue laser diode. I'm going to switch the material type from aluminum oxide, and I'm going to go all the way down so that I've got these blue icons next to the material. And I believe that this is a basswood blank. I'll click on that. And we're going to see that it automatically, once again, popped in the settings that I need for this type of material, making it, once again, super convenient to find some clip art and some settings and just start creating. From here, all I need to do is align my work material up to the laser machine, make sure that the focus is set, and then sit back and relax while we do the next engraving. This is some of the best detail I've ever seen come off of a laser diode machine, keeping in mind that the machine is still on the lowest resolution. The first two projects produced amazing detail at amazing speeds, and most of all, they were fun, they were quick, and they were easy. Before I move on to the Lightburn software, there's one more thing that I'd like to show you within the LDS software. Let's check that out now. I've loaded in some of my own artwork that I'd like to engrave. If I do the engraving on this, this white, it does show up as something that the laser is going to try and engrave. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to mark my material. And I don't want to spend the extra time that the laser is going to be engraving all of these white areas. So what I'd like to do is make a tracing of my project and for that, once I have this selected, I have this bitmap copying option. I click on that once, and that pops up the option here with two settings, denoising and smoothing. And when I hold down the control key and scroll wheel in, we're going to see that I get all these orange line tracings, and these two settings affect what those tracings are going to look like. And this looks pretty good. It has most of the detail. It is skipping some of these smaller pieces, but getting some of the other ones. I like the way that this looks, and I'll hit confirm. I'll zoom back out once again, and it doesn't look like it really did anything, but all of those orange lines stayed, and that is what I want when I click and drag that off to the side. My original image, I don't need that anymore, so I can delete that out. All I have the option of doing is doing a line cutout of this or a line cut. And I actually want to do a fill engraving. I've searched everywhere off to the side here and I didn't see where I could do this as an engraving. That button is up here at fill. This is that button that I talked about earlier in the video that I looped back and here we are. When I click on fill, it does exactly what it said it would do, and it fills in this where I can now do this as an engraving as I intended, and the laser isn't going to waste time and energy with any of the areas that were previously white. This is everything that I wanted to share with you in this video with the LDS software. Next, I'm gonna change gears. We're gonna take a look at getting Lightburn software connected up to the LP4. Connecting Lightburn software up to the LP4 is pretty straightforward. There's two really important steps that I'll share with you. The first step is the firmware of the LP4 must be up to date. If it's not up to date, Lightburn software will simply not connect to the machine. The second easy step is navigating back over to the LaserPecker website and they have an article, a very detailed article on how to go through and connect Lightburn step-by-step step up to the machine. 
That article does take a little bit of digging to find, so I will have that article link in the video description down below. The main thing that I'm looking for out of that article is the device profile for Lightburn for connecting up to the machine. It's really nice that Laser Packer has included that for us because this machine does have a lot of special and unique features that need to be programmed into Lightburn software and they've taken care of all of that for us. Making sure that I have the LDS software shut down so that I'm not already connected up to the machine. I'm going to open up my copy of Lightburn software. So we'll see typical Lightburn layout. It didn't do anything extra special until we get to the console tab. We're going to see that there's a number of different buttons here. I suggest right clicking on these and then changing the button label to match the function. These are special functions that will move the focusing of the laser head uh, down and up. It'll also turn on and off the red focusing guide lasers, and it will also switch the laser modules between the IR module and the blue laser diode module. And from here, Lightburn is going to function as it normally would. For the first project, I'm going to, under the console tab, hit the button here for the 1064 IR module. And I'll load in some artwork. And actually, I think I'm just going to type out the laser channel. And I'll pick out a font that I like, and I'm gonna change my vertical spacing a little bit, make that a little bit closer, and make this a little bit smaller. And within Lightburn, to you get that graphic centered perfectly within the work area, I can press the letter P and that snaps that over. And from here, I can follow all the same steps of placing my work material underneath the laser, making sure it's perfectly in focus, just as I would using the LDS software. Here's the first settings that I used. I really didn't like the results, so I went back and I changed the settings to something a little bit more aggressive. And this is the results that I have that look a lot better, but personally, I like the results that I get with the LDS software. It's a lot more consistent, and I just like the finish of the engraving a little bit better. But maybe with a little bit more time within Lightburn software, I could get the same results as I did with the LDS software. The next project in Lightburn software, I'm going to be using another piece of this basswood plywood. When we take a look inside Lightburn software, I have the next graphic loaded in, and the very first thing I want to do is navigate back over to the console tab and make sure that I click on the button for the blue laser diode, and that is right here. I get confirmation that yes, the software did switch that over. And when I go over to cuts and layers, um, I'm going to use a speed of 150 millimeters per second at a maximum power of 100%. And my lines per inch is going to be essentially 300. Once again, I'll get my workpiece centered up underneath the machine, get the perfect focus set and We'll see how this one turns out within Lightburn software. About 10 minutes later, this project is complete with rich, beautiful detail. Hey, I had a great time checking out some of the different software, connecting up to the LP4, making several different mini projects. If you enjoyed this video, please drop it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the Laser Channel grow, 
It's also an awesome way to connect content like this with other great people just like you. Until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.